Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Let's start out with a Bitcoin chart because Bitcoin appears to be rolling over. You can see that old 5,000 or so high and you can see that now at around 4,200 we're going to be testing, I'm not sure exactly where the line is, we'll draw it right about here, but we're going to be testing this. Now it doesn't mean that we're going to plunge through it. Uh, you can see that the last sort of rolling over rounding process it actually resulted in a big rally um, and if you look at how it violated that uh, trend line uh, you can see that it, it appeared to be let's get it right down here right there it appeared that uh, this was an absolute violent uh, sell-off breakdown from you know a new high and then rolling over and it was just gonna absolutely crater but you can see that it went down to buy 1800 and it just went straight up from there it was insane I remember buying at that point uh, thinking that it was a short-term pop and it wasn't it it was crazy it pretty much ran all the way to 3000 around almost $1200 but then it had this blast off through 3000 going into the segwit thing so here we are up around 40 uh, 4200 and uh, we've got another trend line to test but really I, I would say that I, I'm leaning towards we'll probably never go below 4000 again uh, I don't know for sure but I, I'm just getting that feeling um, crypto market cap is around 150 billion dollars so we backed off about 10 billion from where we were at the high uh, I might not have caught the exact high so maybe 15 billion we might have hit 165 when I wasn't looking but the highest I remember seeing was 160 billion so we're still up there uh, are we gonna reach that trillion dollars that I predicted could happen this year uh, we could easily do that um, so let's get to some information about China here I'm, I'm gonna talk about our national debt but I want to start about start by talking about China just because China is one of the most important players in this game that we're playing, I'll say. And, you know, when Trump was elected, he made some threatenings about uh, accusing China of being a currency manipulator, which is kind of ironic because the U.S. is probably the biggest currency manipulator in the world. And I'll sh I'm going to show you that. But uh, this chart is very interesting here. This is a chart of the U.S. dollar Chinese yuan. And you can see that since Trump was elected, um, the dollar is in a bear market against the uh, Chinese currency. So whatever devaluation they were talking about that was occurring has rapidly just disappeared. You can see that, that the low that we hit Let's get to the daily. The low that we hit was around 6 down in here. And then it went to about 7 and it's back to it came back down to 6.4. So it's given back more than half. And you can see in what a rapid fashion it's given it back um, much faster than these supposed manipulations by China. Um, so are we hearing anything in the news now about how China is not a currency manipulator or are we hearing anything in the news about how the U.S. is a currency manipulator? No, we're not hearing anything about this story right now. And one spin could be that, well, the Chinese saw that Trump was coming in and there was going to be a trade war. So they reversed courses. But um, who knows the truth of that stuff? It's just interesting that... Uh, the Chinese currency is strengthening in the face of this this debt ceiling debate that's going on in the US. I wanted to show you um, the trading economic site. Let me see if I have that up here. This is the interest rate in China. So you can see this goes back, you can read it here. The benchmark interest rate in China was last recorded at 4.35%. 
Interest rate in China averaged 6.19% from 1996 until 2017, reaching an all-time high of 10.98% in June of 1996 and a record low of 4.35% in October of 2015. By the way, that, that's where we currently are at, so it's been pegged at that low. Nevertheless, 4.35% is significantly better than 0% or 0.1% or whatever the rate is in the U.S. So, you know, 4.35% is if you have $100,000, you're going to make 4300 bucks. So if you have a million, you're going to make 43000 So one could almost live off the interest of a million dollars. In the U.S., you may be lucky to get $10,000 off of a million dollars a year in interest, uh, maybe even less than that. So why are we accusing China of being manipulators when just looking at the interest rates and the currencies and everything else, it appears that we're bigger manipulators than they are? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that we are in a lot bigger trouble than they are. And I wanted to read you this article. Now, I don't know if you heard, but uh, supposedly Chuck Schumer, or, or President Trump has reached out to Chuck Schumer and has cut some deal on the debt. I think the excuse is this: the storms in Texas and Florida, which is, is ridiculous. Uh, but... Uh, this author, Brent Smith, goes into what is a big lie about this entire thing. And we're going to see that at the end, that uh, it, it's a fake debate the whole way along. But let's read this. By making a deal with the devil and siding with Chuck Schumer, President Trump may be lurching toward the dark side. And for what? An $8 billion disaster relief package? $8 billion is a lot of money for the likes of us, but to the government it is nothing. They waste or misplace that amount in a week or two. Heck, with a budget of around $4,000 billion or $4 trillion, the feds spend about $11 billion a day. We're expected to believe that they can't divert less than a day's outlay to help the truly needy, those who have lost everything in Texas and Louisiana, in some cases. Not to mention those who will truly lose everything if Irma tracks into Florida. We're supposed to buy this load of crap? Yet President Trump appears to have channeled Mitch McConnell. In March 2015, McConnell said during an appearance on CBS Face the Nation, quote, I made it very clear after the November election we're certainly not going to shut down the government or default on the national debt. Of course, way back in 2015, the debt ceiling was a paltry $17 trillion. Trump effectively said the same by stating that the administration will always agree on raising the debt ceiling, quote, because of the importance If this isn't bad enough, it appears to be getting worse. The latest buzz on the Hill is that Trump, POTUS 1, is in league with Schumer, POTUS 2, to propose eliminating the debt ceiling for good. Now, I can't figure out why Schumer has anything to do with any of this. Don't the Republicans have control of the presidency and both branches of of, uh, Congress? So the pres- the president has the House, the Senate, and the presidency. What does Chuck Schumer have to do with anything? Why should he be? Is he the minority whip or something? I, but still, that's ridiculous. Uh, continuing, I didn't believe it when I first read the news, mainly because it was the Washington Post. But then I read on, and sure enough, they directly quoted President Trump. Quote, on Thursday... Trump was asked by a reporter at the White House about abolishing the congressional process for raising the debt ceiling. He replied that there are lots of good reasons to do that, wrote the Post. Really? Name one. He won't be asked to do so. He added that it could be discussed. For many years, people have been talking about getting rid of the debt ceiling altogether. This is stunning. The drain the swamp, send them all back, 
build the wall, cut taxes, pro-business president we elected is now proposing to greenlight profligate government spending. And V. POTUS Pence also appears more than willing to jump into the big spending deep end of the pool as he is open to, quote, make it easier to tie raising the debt ceiling with Congress passing a budget. Either way, it would be off to the races for Congress to spend, spend, spend. Again, for what? All because of the big lie created by the crooks in Washington that the United States would actually default. This big lie, this is the big lie, but a lie that has been repeated by so many experts over and over as to magically become fact. Maybe we should talk, maybe we should call it an alt fact. Amendment 14, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution is clear regarding the requirement of the government to first and foremost pay debt obligations. It guarantees that whatever debt the United States government accrues shall not be questioned. Nowhere does it state an obligation to pay for all the other crap. If Congress were actually to follow the Constitution, it would be impossible for it to default. If the government shut down tomorrow for an extended period, there would still be plenty of cash rolling in to pay the debt. Any money left would be apportioned how Congress and the President saw fit. It's up to them to prioritize. This is the genesis of the big lie, because they haven't the courage to say no, ever. They created the shutdown default myth, making it unnecessary to do so. As long as they can continue to fool the people, all will be well. I wrote, last, I wrote on Thursday that I was developing shin splints from jumping on and off the Trump bandwagon. If he continues down the Schumer-Pelosi path he appears to have chosen, I'll be jumping off for good. So you can see that, and I think I've done a video on this before, the whole debt ceiling thing is a ruse to begin with. Because the first thing they're required to do with their tax money is to pay their debts. Now, we know that the national debt is $20 trillion and at 1% interest, that gives us not a lot. I mean, 10% uh, is $2 trillion, and so that's a $200 billion a year at 1% interest rates. Now, if you raise the interest rate to, say, 5%, and that amount went up fivefold, then you'd be talking about a trillion a year. But they're still taking in two to three trillion in taxes. So there's easily enough money, and that's the point that uh, this Brent Smith is making, is that they're already obligated to pay their debts, and they have plenty of money to pay their debts. Uh, they just don't have plenty of money to pay all the other promises that they've made and that's the big issue, is that they would actually be called on the carpet and exposed for uh, running Ponzi schemes and bubbles, and you know people would be calling for their heads. So they perpetrate this big lie of a debt ceiling, and we have to have a debt ceiling debate, and we have to have a potential government shutdown if we don't get our budgets passed, and the U.S. could default. Because, as he said, they don't want to face the issue, which is that they need to cut spending, and they're spending more than they're taking in. So, uh, really good point. Uh, let's get back to the markets here. I wanted to take you over to the silver market. Silver has been kind of falling off lately. So, uh, like I said in my interview, if you caught my interview with Elijah recently, um, I did not predict that we would have $200 silver. I said that if uh, this precedent, and I did not say that uh, we had, this indicator had broken out, but uh, you know how the press is. They, they need a sensational headline, so uh, Elijah's not immune to that. But what I did say is that if this monthly MACD crosses the zero line, then we will get a buy signal that we haven't had since 2003. 
and the last time we did have that signal uh, we got a uh, tenfold move from about five bucks to fifty bucks over the subsequent years now the big issue with what I showed you with the dollar against the Chinese Yuan a lot of people are saying that uh, this is just weakness in the dollar so you can see here this is the do dollar gold price and by the way I want you to note that if you look down here on the monthly MACD you do have a positive crossover of the red line very clearly and it looks like the blue line has crossed as well so this uh, key technical indicator that I've been watching for silver actually has broken out for gold and the last time that happened where we got a positive breakout through the zero line on the monthly MACD was all the way back here it was actually back in 2002 so 15 years ago and when that happened gold was 300 bucks so gold ran from there uh, was really only a five to six fold move uh, six, actually six six to seven fold move from there uh, not the move that silver made so very interesting that gold has already made that uh, breakout move uh, the other one that we want to look at is palladium uh, what's going on in palladium is crazy it's uh, it was one that I watched for a long time and it uh, we did buy some palladium back in 2008 when it got down to like if you can believe this it was uh, about 150 bucks or so back in 2008 uh, it got down to 158 but you can see palladiums all the way up it recently hit a thousand which is higher than any of the highs we had uh, during the precious metal bull market uh, starting back in 2003. The only time we had a higher price was when we had that uh, palladium platinum crisis with the automakers back in 2000. Kind of a freak uh, anomaly. But it looks like on the monthly here that palladium is actually setting itself up for one gigantic uh, you know 20 year type pennant breakout and will gold and silver follow it well so far it has palladium has actually led the market now I have no idea what the fundamental news is behind that I don't really think of palladium as a investment metal uh, certainly not as much as platinum so uh, if if it gets in there it's the fourth most popular but I don't even know if it's that so what's behind this move? I don't know. If any of you do, uh, um, I'm welcome to your comments and suggestions. So we're still watching silver. Silver is the one that if we get that breakout, I think we may mirror uh, what we had last time. Gold only moved about six, seven fold, but silver moved tenfold. Uh, we may get the same thing again this time, and we'll talk to you next time.